This episode is sponsored by the following patrons. Thank you so much for supporting this show. And as the season comes to an end, mini season with live streamed games are going to pick up. If you want to play in a mini game online, head on over to patreon.com in the link in the description below to sign up to play. Players are competing for a one-of-a-kind totem pole prize package. The winner will receive a cash prize, merch, and their own totem pole spin-off show that will air after season three. And now the jury will come in and have a roundtable discussion about the final three to help them decide a winner. Later, they will get to question the final three. The final three will give their speeches and we will have a winner. Let's welcome the jury to talk about the game. Hello, jury, long time no see, but it is good to see you. But you are here and you will decide a winner of this game. Now you know who the final three is and you will get to discuss your thoughts and opinions of what has happened in this game, how it relates to the baggage that they carry, have they let their baggage go, have they let their baggage define them, and what does that mean for your vote? The floor is yours. One of the questions I just feel like should be, <clears throat> How is your game different from the other two? Because those three up there, and that was my point, what I was trying to pitch to them, y'all all played like the same game, like yeah. literally very similar games. How do y'all expect to beat each other, you know? Only one of them is going to win, so I feel like somebody should say like, how does your game differ from the other two? Because they literally, I feel like they've all played very, very similar games. I feel like they didn't really start making moves, really, well Josh really didn't start making moves when he got the totem pole, because he started making moves that like, no one knew of. So I just want to know what his strategy was because I feel like he was very all over the place. Josh's yeah. round, Josh's round was very, very like shocking. Personally, I just want to ask like Sabrina, like what did she do? Because yeah. personally, I didn't see her contribute much at all as, as far as conversations. Whenever we'd have a conversation, it would just be so. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I need to do. Yeah, okay, she percent. didn't really ever make proactive moves herself in order to like ensure her safety in the game. Like she didn't ever make moves or throw names out. She just waited for the other person mm -hmm. to throw names out. So I just don't yeah. just know where, where her head was at or yeah, what she was thinking. Yeah. She, she didn't really do yeah. anything until like she won that last one. Yeah. So she like, how did she get there is my yeah. thing. Because all she did was be like, I got your back. Or, yeah, and so yeah. like, I felt like when she would hear some, what somebody else was voting for, she'd be like, okay, I'm gonna vote for them. Yeah. 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 yeah, I feel like if we're being honest, I would just say that me personally playing the game, I only seen that Josh is the only person in that on that final three that has been okay with saying a name first. Shane is one of the players who was like, he wants to hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, Sabrina's the same way. She wants to hear what you're saying before she makes a move. So I definitely think that Josh has the upper hand on that. He wanted to make a move. He wanted to play the game set from jump. So he was okay with saying names first. He didn't want to just sit back and have somebody say names and he just jumped on board with that. So. I feel like one of the questions would be like, what was your riskiest move in the game? Yeah, because Josh, like on my round where he put me on the bottom, he straight up came to my face and said, I'm putting you on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I respect game So I respect, I respect game moves yeah. like that. Like he literally told me that he was going to vote me out. So like I knew like, oh, this is game time. Like he, he came here to play. Like, he didn't come to mess around. Absolutely. Yeah. So I really respect that. I agree with the Sabrina thing about her. Like she literally just like faded. She was just there, you know, and got by, you know, last game she was a sweet girl and all that, but this is a game, you know. Exactly. So what about Shane? Because I guess I, you could compare him too to Sabrina. Sabrina. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, like I said earlier, they're like both of them had the aspect they're, of where they were just worried. What are you doing? Like, uh, oh, what are you doing? Like, uh, if, I, if, I, if I go to them and I'm like, hey, like, what are you thinking? They're like, oh, I'm good. Whatever. What are you thinking? Like, that's not yeah. what I'm thinking. They, they never. Like, no. They never did any. They never said a name. They're like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm in between. I'm limbo. And I mean that's good up until a certain point. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you gotta start making moves. Yeah, start yeah. Making you can't win. One thing I will say about Shane is when he had bonds with people, those bonds were strong. Oh, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. He made strong. you feel very yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Very yeah. reassuring. Yeah. Very like. I had a very good. strong bond with him. Yeah, yeah. he said that y'all three made an alliance, yeah. and uh, right after the Jack, you said or the match with George Abby, y'all made an alliance. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. it went up from there. Yeah. What about you? Which match? Yeah, what did you say? Um, I. 
I would just love to have a conversation with Josh, you know, how he actually made the decision between me and you. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think, I think realistically, um, he made it from a, uh, um, a strategic standpoint. Mm -hmm. I don't think he actually made it because me and Josh were extremely tight. Yeah, you but know, Josh and I share a bond that's different. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, behind closed doors, and I don't think anybody saw but the cameras how tight me and Josh had gotten. No, I get that, but again, uh, I understand why Josh did what he did. And I'm not saying that, take away from what you're saying, yeah. I know you don't understand it, but I just understand why Josh did what he did. Because I've been talking to Josh since, you know, night one. And it's just, just about, you know, having each other's backs. And we're looking out for our people, and I, you know, don't want to be that way, but I was just looking out for Josh the entire game. He was looking out for me. So that bond that we had, I just felt like it was unbreakable. Now, me sitting here at, the, at his hands, Questionable, but, but I understood after talking to them about the vote, which they all didn't feel comfortable sitting next to me to find it through, which is understanding. But I respect what Josh. Yeah, I mean, but okay, like you said, you were tied with Josh, mm -hmm. but whenever Josh won the totem pole, he put you at the bottom with that, Padilla. And that's what we yeah. said, and that's why we. That's why we questioned that whole round. that's why we questioned the whole round. Yeah. Yeah, we were like, I understand one of us, maybe two of us being at the bottom. But all three of us. Yeah, we were. We were a tight that's, group. That's and then yeah. so he we were confused. We were very much so confused. Everyone. And he made it seem like he was only going to put one or two of us at the bar when mm -hmm. we talked to him. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I don't know what was going through his head during that. I like, I'm so confused about it. it just seems really nice. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why, I, like, yeah, he, sure, he told me in a room that he wanted to make he wanted to shake everything up. Yeah. He didn't like. He wanted to shake it like everyone. He wanted to play the game. He yeah, was he here to play the game. He wasn't was here to fade and let other people tell him what to do. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if Absolutely. he shook it up or just made things more confusing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he knew what he was doing. One thing I want to highlight is that, like, obviously those three were working together for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I think we should really highlight who was carrying, like, who, who was putting the effort to make sure those two were sitting with them. That's something I think is very important because I remember there was a time where Josh switched me and um, Sabrina. And so he like did a silent move that saved Sabrina, and I I want to like mm -hmm. definitely point that because if they're working together this whole time, I want to like yeah we've all been working together the whole game like the, since the beginning yeah, yeah. the final we, seven was basically everyone oh, that that worked together, together yeah, yeah. and it didn't like we never established like an alliance but we just all had a unspoken bond yeah and to go with the final sorry point but to go with that final four that group sorry y'all was a little more stronger than the original seven that we had because we knew that these three were in the same room. These three made a bond that we probably wasn't going to be able to break. So I also think I need to bring up um, the round where I almost went home. Can we just talk about that real Because I literally was on the bottom and then y'all made me the switch and I was like, oh, hell, like, I'm safe. Literally, like, yes. the like, and then all of a sudden I, I go up to the front and it was between, I knew it was between Shane and Sabrina because they were the only two safe spots that I could do. So I instinctively chose Shane and I put him on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then he pulled out his power card and he said, oh, wait a minute, and he flipped the game. Yes. He pulled out his power card and he said, now I can undo what the switch has done. And then yeah. he put me right back on the bottom. That's so a power move. That is yeah, a power that move. Power Absolutely. Yeah. That is I don't something think, that she I don't even know like. if Sabrina knew that he had that card. I don't think mm -hmm. she did. No, and nobody he, he knew had, that he was going to pull that card. I knew he had a card, but yeah, I didn't know what the card was. Because he got the card during that challenge. We just didn't know what the card was. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was a that was a, that was a game where, and then it was I don't know like even after he did it like I still felt like comfortable with him because he's like I'm so sorry like he was like very like yeah he's very reassuring very like you know? yeah. yeah and he does things non malicious non maliciously yeah and like I think that's one of his high points he's just very sweet and so he feels very you feel like he's very comfortable you can go to him and that he's always going to be on your side so I think that's probably something that he probably a played strength, yeah. really yeah. well I don't know. Mm -hmm. If he played it, or if that's how he, I feel like that's genuinely how he is, yes. and so I, he just, he just made it work for him. Mm -hmm. well, but we didn't come here to be nice, though. We came here to play. Yeah, the I know. Yeah, we came here. But him being nice has gotten him. It got to him. Yeah. 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 So absolutely. One thing I want to ask, like, then, like Shane is like, how proactive was he in terms of strategy? Because socially he was great, but proactivity in terms of strategy, what was he doing strategically every like round? That's, that's one of the. That's a good question. I think that's a good. That's question one of the things that we yeah. spoke about. He was literally just one of those people with that. If he would come, if I would go to him and say, "Hey, Shane, how are you voting?" He's, um, I'll do whatever. What are you voting? Like, it's just yeah. one of those. Never a straight answer. Like, never a vote. Versus I've seen. I would go to other. Like, I would go to Kadi. I would go to Jigs. I would go to you. And like, well, how are you voting? It's a name, you know. Versus yeah. them is, oh, what are you gonna do? Like. There was always an enemy. Yeah. But I also remember that luggage tag game, like he, he kept getting the highest amount of tags. Yes. And like, the, literally like it was only three things you could either, you could either get the necklace, the exposed, or the secret advantage. And, he, and it's whatever you find first, unless you want to give that one up to go and find the necklace. Yeah. And so I, like. So he chose that, that was, that was, yeah, a, strategic, that was, that was a strategic move. Yeah. yeah. I thought he 
found the necklace. I thought he found the necklace yeah, too. too. But I don't know if he was trying to. <laughs> My thing is, I don't know if he was ever trying to be at the top of the totem pole. I just wanted to play it too safe. He didn't yeah. want to piss anybody off. Okay, why are you looking like that? that? You need to say something. Well, I thought I, I thought I found it, but if he found it and then didn't take it, like, I mean, that's a. That's no, that's well, a, we were outside. No, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, so. no, he, yeah, told, I like, he told us that he, he didn't find it. Okay. Yeah. He found that card because he was going to drop off that card to go and see if he could find it. But he was like, just keep that card. Oh, I know something. I don't know if you guys know this, but Josh didn't even, when we did the cypher oh, game, yeah. Josh didn't even solve oh, yeah. the puzzle. Yeah, he, he, no, he, he just used the data and started looking at no, it. Yeah, so Sabrina, someone, someone was out there on the balcony. Sabrina, 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 she, Sabrina yeah. figured it out and she was like, if you want it, you can take it. So right there, so that's yeah. an alliance. So I feel like Loki, Josh pulled her like up. Yeah. And then Sabrina was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a favor back. But she didn't need honest, to do that. If we're being honest, out of that three, Josh carried it. Like, I'm, that's just he carried, Yeah, he yeah. Carried really it. Back. Especially towards the end, they all, like, I have a feeling that Josh threw out a name and they were like, yeah. And then especially when you said that the, the out loud vote, when mm -hmm. you said when, Luke, when, I feel like if you would have said another name, they would have went with that they name too. Went, they they went, went, yeah, yeah, absolutely. With whatever name that I went with, they were going to go with that. Yeah, because so, yeah. they heard that name, they're like, oh, he's already voted. That so, is true. Yeah. Yeah. When it became yeah. our tie, it was Josh that said, I'm Sabrina thinking flipped. me. She literally said she was not willing to go to, she wasn't, which I understand her not willing to go to a tie because it was going to be us that was vulnerable, mm -hmm. but she flipped because she, she, when it was tied between you two, she did flip, and that's how you ended up leaving. And then, so she was the reason why. Yes, I love her. Really? <laughs> well, yeah, she was. She was the, <laughs> she queen, she was the one person that, like, if she would have voted for Luke, uh, he would have. No, if you would have voted for you, you would have went home. But she voted for Luke, and so that's so made the tie. tie. And then um, she was like, "I'm not gonna vote for um, sub, um, vote for Jackie." Yeah. And then. Uh, Shane's whole thing was she he owed you a debt and I was like, Well you owed him you owed her a debt, you made it that debt the first vote, you don't know. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And he was like, Yeah, you're right. And like he was gonna be like, Okay, and then you were like, I don't, I don't wanna be here and they were like, Okay, we'll vote you out. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so, so Josh so Josh kept his word and so did Shane. Yeah. yeah. So Sabrina was just kind of like she was kind of just following everyone else. Yeah. She's following I think she yeah. wanted to tie and then I think she wanted to tie again because she thought that No, she didn't want to tie. She didn't want to tie because she voted she for flipped. she voted for she me. Told me before that, like she said that, I said, well, if it ties, like, you're willing to go to uh, draw for, for them, like, put yourself in there. And she said, no, she didn't them. So Sabrina's the one. And oh, Sabrina did that? I think that's very, very test. Like, I think that's something we want to highlight is the fact that Sabrina did actively do things, but maybe things that aren't really, like, things no, she she no, no, she, 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 no, she, she, yeah. she, she had her shields for sure. She knew yeah. how to use her shields and do what she needed to do with us, and all respect to that. All right, jury, thank you. But now it's time for you to decide on two questions for each person in the final three. They're preparing their speeches, and we'll go from there. Let's bring in our final three. Come on in. Now can ask your questions. <laughs> uh, I have a question for your Josh. Josh, so what was your thought process when you were at the top of the totem pole? Alright. So me getting the top of the totem pole kind of was by accident. But I knew my strengths in that challenge with y'all. I suck at puzzles. I can't sit <laughs> down. So the whole entire time, I was looking for an out in this conference. I was like, how do I either, you know, money for my way to like have someone else win, or how do I figure out how to win? And so when Sabrina said, hey, it's on the, like the last word was like balcony or something, I was like, all right, go to the balcony. So my thought process behind picking who I want to like rank, I was like, I know who I'm riding for in this game. And I'm like, we don't have much time to kind of like hide that. So I was like, they're gonna be safe. So that's when I was like, all right, these two, and then Jace, those were the ones that were safe. I told one person, and one person only, what I was going to do as far as who was going to be on the bottom and who I was gonna target, and it was Luke. And the reason why I targeted Luke was because I felt like at that point in the game, he was, he was known, he was bubbly, he was friendly, he was doing every single thing that a lot of us were doing, but well, and he looked good doing it. Oh, and I was, I got you. So I was like, I was like, he needs to go. And so <laughs> every reason for you to leave. Okay. I, I, yeah. 
so that was my, that was my thought process, like putting him there, and you know, like the rest of the room was just it was like high, low, high, low, and that's you know, like the people who I'm working with, like truly, like that round, like it couldn't have worked out any more perfectly. Um, you know, I did not get my way at the end of it. It, it made a statement as to like what I wanted to happen the rest of the game, and I think I painted a pretty clear picture that round as to who I was writing. First of all, congratulations. Y'all know the love that I have for y'all, so that's real. But my question is for you, Sabrina. Okay. We feel like y'all all play very, very similar games, like very similar games. So my question is, how is your game different from the two sitting next to you? So I agree with you. I think we all did play very similar games. Um, I think when it comes to Shane, um, I did win atop the totem pole. And that was just a, that's just a basic difference. Um, but I feel like I was also really good at adapting throughout this game. Like when I knew that things were going to be in trouble, like I wanted to make sure I had myself an out. So for example, um, the very first competition, whenever with the sandbags, as soon as we got to that final round, I knew I wasn't going to win. Um, so I immediately went to Tessa and I was like, hey girl, like if you win, don't pick me up. If I win, I got you. And that essentially save me that round um, and then also whenever Jackie was going to go up and reposition the totem pole with Jace as soon as I heard Jackie was going to do that I turned around the couch and I was like Jackie I got you and I think that also helped me stay in that game so I think I was very good with making sure that I knew my way through everything and I was able to make the connections that I needed to stay in each round um, and also I wasn't put into the bottom five until Jace had the necklace um, so I think I made really good connections with a lot of people. Um, even though I had my specific alliances, I still had some kind of connection with almost every one of y'all on the couch. And I think that also made a difference as well because um, I know these two didn't happen to be as many connections as I did. So I think that's another reason why my game is a little bit different. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so um, Shane. It appears to some of the members of um, the jury that in kind of game conversations, you. Um, Focus more on just being agreeable rather than pushing our agenda. Would you consider that to be true and why and why not? Um, yes, in the game I was very transparent with everyone and I felt everyone knew where I stood and the people I was uh, campaigning for and, and working with. Um, and part of my strategy was to stay back and let people throw out names and then I grab that name and roll with it and then keep my name off the bucket list for people to check off. Um, my entire game was going around to different groups and not just one uh, specific group and getting information, going back to the people I was working with and making sure we were on good terms and making sure it wasn't me through each round. So yes, um, I did let a lot of people take the shots, but I, when something was thrown out to me, I agreed with it, walked away, went to the next person and made sure we were working on getting that next person out and then finding out more information from other people and seeing where everyone was at and letting people throw out other names and then me taking them in and seeing which side I should go for. So for me, I think that worked the best and helped me get to the final three. Thank you. <coughs> Shane, my question is also yes. for okay, you. Yes. <laughs> so we in the jury noted that you did have a very strong, very present social game. You were able to adapt and form strong bonds with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but my question to you is, what was your strategic thought process behind grouping yourself with these two and like a little bit more, elaborate more on the strategy? Okay, yeah, so um, with Sabrina and Josh, um, it was very early in the game when um, on day one after the first challenge, we were coming up the stairs right here um, and in front of me was Sabrina and I saw her find a expose on the table in the corner right here and she turned around, we made eye contact and in that moment I knew we had a connection right there. Um, we went and talked, made an agreement to work together and then after that these two connected and then at that point um, they, they asked each other who we trusted and it was Derek and myself and then the four of us came together um, and from that moment on that was the group I was going to ride and die with um, and then going forward in the game um, there were a couple moments where I felt like I was in danger, specifically with Jace. Um, and, when everyone, <laughs> <laughs> and when everyone ran off to go talk to Jace when he was top of the totem pole, I was never into that of like begging and trying to save myself. I already knew where I stood, um, and it was no point. And there was a moment with Maddie and Jackie when we were the only three out here and everyone rushed into Jace. When I told you guys I wanted to work with you, we made an agreement, I think you promised you guys that. And I keep, if I think you promised, I keep it. Um, and I'm very genuine with everyone. So um, 
yes, I made sure that the people I was working with the entire game were the people I was writing, di writing or dying with, and it worked out exactly how I wanted it to. With Maddie and Jackie, unfortunately, it didn't. They both went on the same round, but I wanted to work with them as well. So I had my bases covered, and those are the people I wanted to go to the end with, basically. Gotcha. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, my <coughs> sorry. My question is for Sabrina. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna stand because obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you mentioned how y'all just kind of adapted and everything, yeah. or how you adapted to the game and just made sure you were good. Uh, so my question is, what was your biggest risk in the game that you felt could have cost you the game? Okay. So. That's a tough question. That's a good question, though, honestly. Ooh, um, I think, <clears throat> wow, it's really tough. I guess kind of going along the, the lines of the question, I think a risk that I did take, honestly, is maybe taking these two with me mm -hmm. to the finals because I was very, very, very torn between Derek and keeping him and not because his game was incredible, but also there were some not so fun moments, you know. <laughs> so I'm gonna say so definitely that for sure. And then I think a risk too was trying to work with Jace almost because I feel like you. I think you, I feel like you saw through it, and I think talking to you and trying to strategize later in the game was a risk, and I think I was afraid that you would see that and you would just continue to target me, which I mean you ended up doing anyways, but um, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> no, no hard feelings, but, but it's true though, because like, because you were the one person I was like, I don't know, and I was like, I should just, just go for it. But like, I was after I talked to you, I was, I was definitely a little bit nervous, and I thought that maybe that was going to be the end of me, like after that. Because <laughs> whenever it came to the replacement with you and Jackie, I mean, of course I was sweating, and I was like, I figured y'all, I mean, clearly y'all were talking together about it, and I wasn't sure if you would just go ahead and be like, put her at the bottom, like, I didn't know. And that was definitely very stressful. So I think maybe some of the relationship choices, um, not very many of them, but again, Jason. <laughs> and yeah, just choosing my final three, that's a huge risk. I mean, because I don't know what, you know, what your all heads are at and like what y'all are thinking either. So I think, yeah, that's a risk. But I was willing to take it because again, I did work with them the whole game and I was willing to sit next to people that like I knew that I trusted throughout the game and I felt like I could, that we could hold our own. So, yeah. yeah. Um, my question is for Josh. Um, so how did you pick between Derek and Jace in that round that you have to decide between them? All right, so throughout the game, me and Jace were pretty close. Um, I noticed the first round when the ladies were targeting him, they're like, Jace has to go, Jace has to go. And I'm like, well, yeah, but not now. I was kind of like, I need to work with people who need people to work with. Jace needed me more than I needed Jace in this game because Jace's nine was on, he was on the line the whole time. Huge target, huge threat, we saw his season, so he needed me. And at some point, Jace was like, you know what, like, you're my only chance. Remember when he said that? He was like, you're my only chance of making it to the finals. And I, it was true, <laughs> it was really your, your only chance. Um, but I didn't notice the scrambling you were doing with Derek, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you were looking for other options. Um, with Derek to possibly like save you in the final four and so between that between you two I was like I can't have that in the final four because I need to make it to the end and although I adore you as a person true like just the war and everything I was like you can't win this is my game and that's how I was like you have to go and that's when I picked Derek because I knew it was gonna be a lot easier to get out Derek in the end and sit next to these two people because I truly felt like I could sit next to these two people and we can all fight for our chance and we, our games are pretty similar and so yeah. I was like I want to fight against people who you know it's not easy but like you know definitely an even with like playing field so that was my thought process behind that. Yeah. Thank you. All right thank you for your questions and your answers and now for the final three this is your final chance to sway the jury and tell them that you deserve to win. Go from left to right, go first. <laughs> okay, I thought about 
a lot of what I was going to say from being cast to now, and this moment is very surreal. I'll start off with like my passion for like the totem pole. When I learned I got cast, it was just probably one of the best moments of my life because like I have so much passion for like live games in general and playing and com like competing against people and just that aspect of it all. So getting cast and being able to like get to this moment was very surreal for me. That was where my passion lied. I'll explain my decisions and like why I work with them. My passion for live games means I'm pretty aware of like what happens in like the live game community and stuff like that. And I did have the opportunity to watch Sabrina and her season of Big Brother Columbus. Um, and I knew exactly how she was playing the game in that season. She's trustworthy, she's good at competitions, and that was someone I wanted to work with. I, I needed someone I could trust 100% throughout the whole time. And I've seen her play before, and I'm like, I need that on my side, because I want I want to get to the end. So, and it worked out. I'll start off like with the jury and like how I got here pretty much with Chase. I worked, like I said, he needed me more than I needed him. And I saw the connections he had with like Padilla, with Luke. At that point when um, I put you at the bottom, that's when he told me that you two were tight. And I was like, oh no, oh, oh no. I was like, it's me. I'm like, I, now I know for a fact you're not writing for me like 100%, which is fair. You're not supposed to write for me. This is your game. But it was my game that ultimately, you know, put you right there. So that's pretty, <laughs> don't pour your eyes at me, oh my god. So um, basically, that was how I like pretty much got where I was like with the jury, just knowing where those relationships line up with you, with you two. I knew you two were really close, and me and Derek were close from the beginning, so getting you back in the game, getting you back in with the three of us was crucial. And I will say this to you, Jackie. You, <laughs> thank you so much. I know I gave you a lot of crap when you um, said, hey, you know what? take me out, but your sacrifice is how us three pretty much steamrolled the last four people. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Um, I'm just gonna just on that. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this journey with me. The connections I made with you guys were real. I feel like I honestly played this game with a lot of heart, a lot of passion. This just, it means so much for me just to play the game, just to be here in the moment and just like compete and all that. So, Thank you so much. Vote how you want to vote. This is your vote. No bitter jury or anything like that. Because if you want to vote how you want, it's not bitter. It's your vote. that I had and played it to my advantage um, with just little even you know easy little side conversations like quick conversations with y'all too like just things that I needed to do I was quick on the fly and like I made sure that I was gonna be okay um, I did win the most crucial last top of the totem pool competition um, and that secured me here in the final three and so that was a huge moment for me because I had not won a competition yet however I was in the final round for multiple competitions um, especially that first competition I, I had people trust me enough to where nobody gave me weight um, so I was able to get through that, and I knew that I could continue to make those connections as we continued on through. Um, but I think I did genuinely make a connection with all of you guys, um, whether it be close in game or just personal. And that was also, you know, a little bit of strategy too, because I want to make sure that at least had spoken a good, you know, while with all of y'all. And I did. Um, even though I wasn't working closely with all of you guys, I think it was still important to get the connection there, at least establish that, so that way if things were going to naturally come together later, then it would be okay, and that we could work, you know, together in the future. Um, I definitely was very strategic in my social strategy as well. That's usually my strong suit is my social game, and again, I think that was my big reason why I ended up here, because I was able to have people trust me. And I think that's a big part of any of these games, like he was saying. Like, and I never broke my promises or my word to anybody here. Um, again, also thinking promises mean a lot to me too. <laughs> so that was a big thing for me. Sorry. <laughs> but um, I never lied to anybody. I was very open and honest with y'all. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I never lied to anybody. I was straight to y'all, like no matter what was happening. Um, I may have been vague if something was I wasn't sure about, but like I never straight up said, hey, I'm doing this, and then didn't do it or did something else. So I think that's a good thing that y'all can look at upon for my game. I, I was definitely very honest. 
Um, I did find an exposed card in the very first round, and I kept it in my pocket until the very end of the game, basically. And only these two people knew about it. I didn't tell anybody else. Um, and I was able to keep it a secret that whole time, which was good. Um, and um, like he said, vote how y'all want to vote. We all think deserves to win this game. I think we all have a good shot. And um, But I hope y'all see those connections I made with you guys. I hope you see that my game was hopefully good enough for y'all to, to vote for me to win. So, yeah. All right, guys. Um, I just want to thank each and all of you, seriously, for making this uh, my very first live game. Super fun and exciting. I'm very grateful to be sitting here. Whatever happens, I have no hard feelings. Trust me, I'm super happy no matter what. Um, going into the game, I was very nervous I was going to be a first boot or something like that because I really had never done anything like this. Um, but I really discovered a lot about myself and my social aspects of my life and really connected with people, um, genuine connections, and it wasn't any BS or anything like that. And that's why I was very open and transparent with my game with everyone. I've never had any BS with anyone. Um, and if people were coming up to me and asking me who I was voting, I was very clear about it. Or that I, or I was very clear or unsure of. I was very honest about all, all of that and very transparent. Um, and then moving forward in the game, I think my connections with mainly Maddie and Jackie was a huge factor in helping me get to the next stage. And losing you both in that moment really hurt my game. And at that moment, at the end of the evening, I felt like I was going home next. Um, I still have my connections with Derek, Josh, and Sabrina. Um, with Kadia, Luke, and Jace, I genuinely didn't feel like we had any connections in the game. Um, we were, we really were it, and it. And I'm not gonna stand here the whole game. I, the whole game. The whole game. I'm gonna. It's funny because I'm not the person like to run and kiss or anything like that. To try and improve my game. Um, that's just not the type of person I am. And I saw these moments of time where I could pull in Nadia, I can pull in Jackie and make a new connection um, and hopefully help my game. And in that moment, it really did. Um, I also found an advantage in the game. I played it in the perfect moment. Um, and I'm sorry it was... <laughs> oh, my God. We it on zero to So that moment really was a big part of my game. And then getting the switch from YouTube really saved my game, so thank you. Um, as well, I did find an exposed that I never played. I still have it. Um, it's nothing crazy. It's called Receipts. It says, pick a player. They must publicly, publicly reveal all of their, their past moves. So it wasn't anything crazy that would have affected the game. It definitely could have caused some drama, but I didn't need it because I felt my social game with everyone. I kind of knew where everyone stood, um, and I didn't want to put more of a target on my back. So in the long run, even though I may not have won the top of the totem pole at all, um, I think my social game and my strategy really helped me get to this end, especially with these two. Derek, everything you did for me and you saved me. I told you, I, like, when I gave you the, defending, the defender, I trusted you and you saved me. Um, and Josh saved you as well. At that moment, we had returned our favors. Um, and that was everything. But Connor as well, I, we really didn't get to play the game together. Um, on your elimination, we had talked previously that we wanted to work together, but during that vote, everyone said they were voting you. And like you guys had asked, everyone said they were, everyone threw out your name, and like I said, I stayed in the back and felt that it was better for me to not throw any other names out and just go with the flow. Um, so yes, my social game and strategy definitely helped me play a strong game and get to that end. So, thank you. And with that, it is time for the final vote. Jared, you will now go and cast your vote for the person you think deserves to win this game. Go. All of the votes are in. And we have a winner. By a vote of five to two to zero. Congratulations. Josh! You Do you want to be on the totem pole? 
season four casting is officially open. Look in the description below for the link for the application. Congratulations to Josh on an amazing win. Here is a message from Josh himself. Thank you so much to the fans. I really appreciate you guys interacting with you guys every single week, whether it's, you know, in my own country or internationally. Shout out to Lucky. And it's just been, it's been so fun. It's been a fun four months watching the show back with you guys. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to the cast. It's, it was so much fun playing with all of you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys again very, very soon once it's safe to do so. Winning this game means so much to me because growing up, I never saw myself in these type of reality TV shows. So to come on the show and be the person who I've always wanted to see on these shows and then win the whole thing, it's just, it's such a cool moment for me. One of my favorite reality TV stars, Davon Rogers, recently said that it is possible for us to do these things. It just hasn't been done. And I know the totem pole's not on the same scale as Big Brother yet, but she was right. It, it is possible for us to do these things and for us to win these games and for us to show who we are on these TV screens and to share our stories. And I did that unapologetically and hopefully I'll do it again. I'm just so glad I got to be the person who I've always wanted to see on the TV screen and I deserve it. I deserve all of that. And I cannot wait to see where the totem pole goes next. Season four applications are out. So hopefully I will see more faces like me applying for this show because it is possible, guys. We can do it. We can do it. Before I go, just remember that black lives do matter. And this includes trans black lives. And make sure you get out and vote. Know who you're voting for, know what you're voting for. And this is not just for the president. So this is for your local community as well because we do have local elections that do happen and you need to know who your sheriff is your da and who's running your school board these are important things in your local community that you should be looking out for and will hopefully prevent more tragedies such as Breonna taylor and many many others that have been lost because of the people who are running our communities and our government that's all i got for you guys and can't wait to see you guys again when my new show comes out. As the winner of season three, Josh's show is coming soon.